again, everyone. It's so nice to see all of the adults that are here and joining us today. Thank you for taking the time to, to come here to be with us. I want to thank Father Cotter for his uh, warm invitation and welcome here to Sacred Heart. You know, I'm, I'm just getting to know my way around the diocese little by little, but I know that if I, if I am looking for a church named Sacred Heart, I'm half the time right. <laughs> Very, it's a very popular devotion uh, in the diocese. I'm happy for that. So I'm really happy to be here. I, I want to take the opportunity once again as I went around the classrooms and thank the teachers and the staff but to thank all of you for the very many ways in which you dedicate yourselves to make Catholic education possible for our young people. Uh, those who teach them, who work and volunteer with the school, parents who make so many, many sacrifices uh, in, in many ways to send your children to this school and to the parish at large for your generosity and your constant vigilance and support of the, of the school and of its activities. You know, when parents bring their children to the church for baptism, uh, they're always excited. The, their, their level of faith can be high and low. They can be really practicing their faith and aware of the spiritual reality that baptism is. Perhaps they aren't that faithful in their practice of the faith, but still have a sense that this sacrament is important to them. But every set of parents that brings their children to the church for baptism makes a solemn promise and has a moral obligation to raise their children in the practice of the faith, of knowing the faith, and of living the faith. And that's why it's so important that Catholic education, whether it's in the context of a Catholic school, or religious education program, or an adult education program, Catholic education is so important. Because how can we live and follow the Lord Jesus if we do not know him? We must know him first. And in knowing him, we love him, and in loving him, we serve him. And so it's so important that we place so much emphasis and energy <clears throat> and sacrifice into teaching our children the ways of the faith. And I'm, I'm so grateful to all of you for the many, many ways of your own way that you make this possible. Boys and girls, we celebrate today the Feast of St. Agatha. St. Agatha is, was, a martyr. And I asked that question on the page, who gave me the answer? Who was the one who gave me the answer? Please stand up. What did you tell me? What is a martyr? People who die for their faith. Very, very good. And so St. Agatha was one of those saints who died for her faith. You know, in a broader way, boys and girls, we can be martyrs in other ways, too, because the word martyr really comes from the Greek word that means a witness, a witness. And in a sense, boys and girls, each and every one of us is called to be a witness, a witness of Jesus Christ in this world. And to that extent, we are martyrs. But in a, in a special way, the church refers to martyrs as those who have given their life for the church, who died for their faith. St. Agatha was one, because rather than sin against purity, rather than to be unchaste, she was willing to suffer death for her faith and for her commitment to always do the right thing, to live a pure and moral life. And because of that, St. Agatha is one of our martyrs, someone that we honor in a very, very special way. Boys and girls, as you were listening to the Gospel account today, we're reminded that each of us is invited and called to follow Jesus in our life. Not just sometimes, not just for periods of our life, but every single day. That each day we would pick up our own cross and follow in the footsteps of Jesus every 
dead every day of our lives. And the gospel told us that in doing that, in following Jesus every day, we have to be proud of our faith. We must be proud to be a follower and a witness of Jesus. We cannot be ashamed of our faith. We should not be ashamed of what we believe. You know, boys and girls, I think that sometimes, sometimes we are with Jesus at different times of our life. Sometimes we're willing every single day to do what it is that Jesus wants us to do. It seems, and I'm cautioning like the fifth and sixth graders and the seventh and eighth graders, I caution you, because there becomes the temptation it says as I'm growing older, I really want to be free to do a lot more things. Things that maybe my church and my faith and my parents don't want me to do. And so what we do is we put aside our faith. We don't do it and live it every single day. Or when we're with our friends, and some of our friends are tempting us to sin and to get into trouble, we are ashamed of our faith. And rather than stand up with our friends and say, wait, wait, wait a minute, that's not what God wants us to do, we give in right away. Because we don't want to be, we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to be made fun of. And we feel ashamed of our faith. Sometimes it seems that young people, when they get into high school and they're no longer in the setting where they're learning about their faith, when they get into high school, when they get into college, they're saying, thank God I'm free of Jesus. Because I just want to do what I want to do. I know it's wrong to drink, but I'm going to drink anyway. I know Jesus would say it's wrong to take drugs, but I'm going to take drugs anyway, because that's what I want to do right now. And we're almost ashamed to follow what Jesus wants us to do. It's so easy to get on that path. We might say, you know, I know Jesus wants, wants me to be present with him at Mass on Sunday. But you know what? I'm just too busy about other things. I have more important things to do. And so we put aside going to church and receiving the sacraments. And Jesus is saying, if we want to be his witnesses, if we want to be his followers, we have to do this every day. Every day. For the rest of our lives, we have to be followers of Jesus Christ. And we should not be ashamed of our faith. We should be proud of our faith. And I know, boys and girls, it's getting harder and harder to stand up for our faith. Because we're living in a world that's making us look like we're goofy for wanting to do the right thing. But it's important that we know that Jesus wants us to be his follower each and every day. You know, in that first scripture reading that we listened to, St. Paul admits right away, we're, we're not perfect. You know, we're not perfect. And we will fail. But we're the right people that God wants because God will help us to understand that because we are not perfect, we need God to help us. We need the Lord to be with us each day every day. And so boys and girls, that's what St. Agatha did. That's what gave her the courage to die for her faith, not to be ashamed. Nobody was going to talk her into being impure. Nobody was going to talk her into saying that Jesus wasn't important in her life. She was willing to die. And boys and girls, for the most part, none of us is really asked to die for our faith. Most of us, as Catholics and as Christians, will die of old age, or maybe from some sickness. But we're not really asked to give up our faith, so we even have it easier. There's a, there's a reason why we must truly give up ourselves to be the people that Jesus wants us to be.